and welcome to In On It. This is a podcast about my crafty life and my passions for yarn and knitting. My name is Ina and I'm coming to you from Norway. And I'm super excited that I managed to put up an episode for you today, only two weeks after the last one. <laughs> so, well... <laughs> Bi-weekly is my preferred schedule for uh, the podcast episodes, but it has proven me difficult to stick to that schedule. So it has been nearly a month or three weeks between the episodes uh, during the past months. Uh, but now hopefully I will continue and do it bi-weekly. <laughs> um, it is busy like for everybody but I do enjoy very much to put together these episodes for you I get a lot of very sweet and um, uh, nice feedback from you viewers and I uh, appreciate it very much and it like fuels my motivations for uh, keeping up the work of producing more episodes so thank you Thank you for that. So I, um, I'd like this time to just jump into my knitting and I will uh, chat a little bit about um, several things uh, at the end of the episode and uh, about November, the month of November in particular because we are now entering the month of November and in my opinion that is the dullest month of the year. <laughs> it is dull and dark and cold and all I do is to hang in there and wait for Christmas and Advent and I very much would like to do something about that and make November a more pleasurable month to be in, but more about that later. <laughs> Little teaser for you there. So, I have been knitting a lot lately, and I do have uh, one finished knit and a couple of knits that are quite close to be finished, so that's exciting. I will start off with uh, the Christmas socks that I'm knitting, or Christmas presents rather. Um, these socks are going to be presents for one of my nephews for Christmas. And uh, I'm knitting these out of um, drops fable and uh, the stripey one is koigu no the stripey one is patterns cry and uh, I last time I didn't think that I had the colorway name but <laughs> that's because it is a very long name There we go. So the name is Singing the Blues, Stripes, yadi yadi yadi. And this yarn was gifted to me by uh, Dawn in, from America. And uh, So that's very exciting because we can't get hold of Patterns Cry uh, here in Norway. And the other one is just some Dross Fable in uh, um, rust color. So this is the first pair. And I used 56 stitches uh, for these socks and they are for a five-year-old boy. And I did a fish lips kiss heel, and I really 
enjoy making that heel. And the stripes were adding up quite nicely on those heels. That makes me happy. And I have completed one more sock and this is for his brother, my nephew O. And uh, he is seven years old, so he will get slightly larger socks. And I did switch up the contrasts for these socks just to like keep them apart. So yeah, they are quite similar in size. I used 56 stitches for both of these these pairs, and I'm just knitting. Um, the larger one a bit longer, an inch longer in the foot or something like that. And uh, the fish lips kiss heel in this pair as well. And yeah, that's that. And I'm on the second sock now of the second pair. This is how far I'm gotten. But they are knitting up super fast and you know the stripes are just making it very fun to to knit on. So I actually managed to squeeze out all of these three socks and I still have this much left of the first 50 gram ball of the Patton's Cry. And I have a second ball as well. So I think that I will be able to crank out even uh, another pair of socks uh, because I think this combination of rust and blue was super nice and I know that my five-year-old son will enjoy a pair of his own so from the leftover I will probably uh, knit him a pair as well for Christmas or for this winter at least because now I'm kind of part of me is kind of focusing on getting things um, ready for Christmas I have had a goal for the last three years to try and complete Christmas presents in November so that I can just enjoy December without the stress of getting things done for for Christmas um, but probably I will continue knitting Christmas presents um, in December as well but uh, I'm super happy that I managed to start quite early you know I could have been starting in January but um, I'm not that kind of a person <laughs> so yeah this is an old project bag from a homespun house. Homespun? A homespun house. You can't really see the tag anymore because it's all washed out. But I do really, really love this fabric. It's a beautiful bag. Which I use all the time for socks. So this is just small enough that it has been um, most of the time laying in my handbag. And it's super easy to carry around and uh, then I can knit some some rounds whenever I have some spare time. So that's very nice. Um, that's that. I have a um, half finished knit and that is a mitten. Which I will put on for you. Yahoo! So this is the spooky selbu mitten which is a super lovely nice pattern by Nordic Stitches and as much as I enjoy the pumpkin and the selbu rose and even the spider on the back of the hand I think my favorite part is this side 
where you have um, these chevrons with, um, uh, do you call it lice? You know, small dots uh, in between uh, in the darker stripes. <laughs> that was poorly explained, but I hope that you understand what I mean. So yeah, I'm very pleased with these mittens. My only small concern is that it is it is this much too big <laughs> for my hands. So I think that I either need to give them to someone with um, longer fingers than I have or I need to felt them slightly to make them smaller. So we shall see about that. I even have casted on the second mitten. <clears throat> Actually, I believe that I showed you this status of the mittens last time. I, I only missed the thumb. So the thumb I have knitted since last time and I have washed and blocked the mitten so uh, you see that the, the fabric is kind of much denser and uh, the pattern has even out and it's looking very nice I have I'm knitting these two mittens out of finul from Rauma in icy blue and um, uh, brown color. And I was I was planning to uh, stitch yellow inside the eyes and the nose and the mouth of the pumpkin. And I tried to do that, but you know what? It looked so sloppy and uh, I, I wasn't able to cover all of uh, the brown stitches with the yellow. So it didn't look, it didn't look good at all. So I just ripped it out again and I decided to just leave the mitten as it is. So that's that and I do have other things on the go as well. So my most active whip I would say at the moment is the arboral sweater uh, which is a pattern by Jennifer Steingas. Steingas? Steingas. She has a company called Knit Love Wool and she has beautiful patterned yokes. Um, I want to knit several of her patterns because they're just gorgeous. So this is my sweater and it's starting to look like something you know i believe that i was just beneath the the yoke pattern patterned yoke last time and i had completed one arm so now i have completed both arms and i have been knitting 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 <laughs> and I have to do another, I think I only have to do another five centimeters before I will start a ribbing. So that will be possible to achieve in an evening or two. And I, <laughs> I was hoping that I could have the sweater finished by this weekend uh, 
um, because I'm going to Trondheim this weekend and uh, uh, Trondheimstrik, which is a gathering and a knitting meetup with um, a lot of vendors and knitters and yeah. I'm going there this weekend and I'm very 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 much looking forward to that and I hope to say hello to some knitting friends and uh, yeah that will be lots of fun but we shall see I can't guarantee that I will be able to finish up my arboral uh, before Saturday but if I do I will most definitely be wearing this sweater to the festival in Trondheim. I am just in love with this sweater. I absolutely adore the color. It's it's very me. <laughs> and I love the contrast in the pattern and the color work is Oh, I, I'm so much looking forward to get this sweater off the needles and start wearing it. And yeah, I have been trying it on a couple of times um, just to make sure that the sizing is correct and um, deciding the, the length of the sweater. And it's fitting like a glove, so that's uh, absolutely perfect. And uh, once again, can't wait to start wearing it. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot to tell you what I'm wearing because I'm wearing hand knits today. This is actually a quite old sweater that I knitted, I don't know, several years ago. It is an Agora sweater and the pattern is called um, Classic Angora Sweater. It's a pattern by Pickles, the Norwegian yarn um, producer, I guess, and uh, pattern designer company. They have so many lovely, lovely patterns out. And this is quite a... Yeah, you can see that the halo of the Angora is definitely there. It's very soft, but um, you know with Angora it tends to peel quite a lot, so I have been deep peeling it many times. Uh, well, back to the arboral sweater. I am using 100% high twist merino in DK weight, so it's very very soft and lovely uh, against the skin and uh, the red color is from Dai Ninja and the light gray contrast with speckles which is not the easiest to see you need to be quite close it's from Lolo did it and it's the Hippo for Mom colorway. Yay! Arboral sweater! Yay! Soon finished. I have been picking up my Penguono lately as well. And um, if you have been following me for some time, you know that I casted on the Penguono during this summer which is quite crazy because <laughs> the penguono is heavy and it's warm and it's knit out of three strands of wool so it has been languishing for quite some time because I couldn't handle to knit on it during the warmest part of the, the summer uh, but now I have picked it back up again and I am so much looking forward to snuggle up in this cozy cozy cardigan <laughs> because I I actually 
haven't that much left before I'm finished. So, so, so. I will back a little bit so it's easier for you to see this. So it's going to be massive. It's going to be massive. It got short, short sleeves, and that's that's good. That's good. And I'm currently knitting on the bottom part. And this is the back. So it's got this big panel on the back and you have these super fun veggies that I think are beautiful. And yeah. <laughs> and the fun thing is that I was actually trying to knit it a bit um, like a slimmer version of the Pengono because I I think it can be a bit wide and um, uh, that's probably not the, the type of garment that looks best on me. <laughs> um, but now I see that it is going to be quite wide, <laughs> even though I try to, I have been I'll shorten this section quite a bit. It will be wide enough, so to speak. So to compensate that, I am planning on knitting it um, a bit longer than the pattern is uh, suggesting. So this uh, part here, well, I need to have double the length at least, so that the coat is it needs to reach below my bottom, yeah. And after I've completed the bottom part, I will pick up all the stitches around uh, front and neck and uh, do, uh, uh, yeah, it will be a collar. And uh, I will probably not do that section very wide. I will keep it quite, uh, narrow um, and probably in some a lighter color so yeah I'm very interested to see you know when the penguono is completed uh, if it will be a garment that I can style in a way that it will be possible for me to wear it to work um, so that would be interesting and exciting. <laughs> I I work in an office um, as an engineer, and uh, it's not a very formal environment at work. But at the same time, you, or at least I feel that I need to look decent, and uh, there there's not. I, w I won't. I wouldn't use uh, all kinds of knitwear to work, for instance. And um, yeah, <laughs> so it will be very. I am excited to see whether the penguin will pass the test of uh, coming with me to work or not. We shall see. Okay, next project. I am knitting on a pair of socks. These are knit two at a time. I have these socks laying uh, at the desk where I have my uh, computer at home. So I have been knitting on them whenever I have been, you know, uh, doing some work at that computer. So I haven't made a ton of progress, but this is what I got. 
So this marker is showing where I was last episode. But these are turning out super fun and I love them. It is uh, made out of a double knit sock blank from Countess of Blaze. And this is this is the sock blank which is hand pa painted and I got it from Countess of Blaze uh, through a club subscription that I had um, with them some months ago. And I knit the socks two at a time mainly because I pull two strands out of the sock blanket at all times, so that's uh, that's just easier. And I think that I told you last time that I'm planning on just uh, continue knitting the socks until I reach the toe, and then I will do some afterthoughts, thought heels at the very end. So yeah, and I am knitting on these are Chai Gu fixed circular needles in 80 millimeter. The, the cable is 80 millimeter. No, <laughs> 80 centimeters. <laughs> wow, that's a short cable. Uh, and uh, it is the size 2.25 millimeter needle, which is my preferred uh, needle size for sock knitting. But boy oh boy, these needles are so sharp. So I have been poking myself with uh, the needles and I even uh, managed to get one of the needles poked uh, beneath my nail. Oh, that was hurtful. Uh, but uh, <laughs> for the most part uh, they are lovely to knit with. And these socks are living in this gorgeous bag which is made by um, Sandy by the lakeside. And I really really wish that she was um, making her stuff out of Norway. <laughs> oh, because uh, her project bags are just um, gorgeous and uh, I would love to have more but uh, I believe that shipping from Canada is pretty expensive. But I got this bag from uh, through a swap <clears throat> with uh, Joanne um, and uh, I was so fortunate as to receive one of her bags and I, I really really love it. I have one more work in progress and that is the shawl that I'm knitting and uh, that uh, many of you are knitting together with me and that is the Lumpy Space Shawl by Stephen West. And um, I must admit that I haven't made one stitch of a progress since last episode and that is purely to the fact due to the fact that I wasn't enjoying my color choice and I have been I have been uh, evaluating a lot of options <laughs> I could either keep knitting with my colors as is and um, cross my fingers that I would be happy with the final result um, because I'm, I am challenging myself. I am challenging, challenging myself uh, with this shawl knits um, with regards to color choice. I have a tendency to knit with uh, a lot of the same colors over and over again, and I really didn't want to end up with yet another shawl of greys and um, pinks. So 
I decided to go a little bit out of my comfort zone and um, I had a really really beautiful green in my stash and I tried to find other colors that would go well with the green and I thought that I had it and I you know I have shown you my colors before and uh, but I can I can uh, put up a picture here so you can see what I'm talking about but I have been you know very much on the fence with my color choice uh, from day one basically uh, so long story short I have been um, ripping out the part three of this shawl which is the border that goes all the way along the shawl and I need to hold it up very very carefully for you right now because the stitches are alive they are not on the needles at the moment only some of them are so you know instead of this brownish uh, burgundy pinkish color that I originally intended for um, for the shawl I have now picked out this color and this is a very pale pink and it is um, a very pale pink Arvetta classic uh, color number 334 and you know uh, and I think that this is a much calmer color combination and you have uh, inside this white here you have quite a few pale pink pops and uh, together with the bright bright grass green um, uh, it will make the, the green color stand out and uh, instead of you know competing with the green it will uh, enhance it and I think that uh, I think that it, this will work very well very well and I will probably do some kind of striping with my first color um, uh, in between the pale pink and I will also probably do the border with the green so that's where I'm at with regard to the lumpy space I will speed up my my progress on that shawl now because uh, we are knitting along together uh, this shawl and we have been knitting for two months now and um, the knit along will end on the last day of November. It seems like um, many of you has ended up in a situation like me and had has put um, this shawl on hold for uh, for some time because there is not that much uh, action or chatting going on in the the Ravelry group um, but I suspect that when November is um, when we are getting into November and uh, approaching the end of the knit along that uh, I will see more finished shawls and uh, chatting going on in the Ravelry group because we have some awesome prizes that you uh, have the possibility to win and uh, I think that just right now we have only one finished object in the finished object thread so if that is the case uh, on November 30th that person will um, be lucky enough to win two, two prizes. I mean come on. <laughs> of awesome yarn and project bags and you know. So... 
but I have decided that uh, by my next episode I will draw one winner from the chatter thread uh, in the Ravelry group so if you would like to enhance your chances of winning a prize you better jump on over there and uh, chat away and show me progress and uh, even finished shawls if you have finished already. That's that. I um, had a giveaway in my last episode because last time was my episode number 20 and uh, I was um, celebrating that round number with a giveaway of some gorgeous Selby yarn and a pattern booklet of uh, Selby patterns. And I had uh, over 120 entries in the giveaway so that was amazing and overwhelming and thank you all for participating and for uh, all those uh, wonderful comments that you left uh, for me to read and uh, I draw one winner randomly and the winner is Gudni Sverigsdottir so congratulations Gudni, I, uh, I suspect that you are from Iceland, aren't you? Sounds like an Icelandic name. <laughs> and um, please shoot me an email and let me know uh, your shipping address and I will send this yarn and the patterns out to you as soon as I can. And speaking of Icelandic, I um, I have just discovered a new to me podcast, which was suggested uh, to me by a viewer of this podcast. And um, I'm very sorry that I don't remember your name, but thank you so much for for mentioning that podcast to me because I have been enjoying it very much. And the podcast is called Hip Hip Barba Knit Stories in one word. And uh, it is um, Linda from Iceland and she is knitting the most gorgeous things. And she's actually a test knitter for Stephen West. I know! And she gets to meet him. Oh, I'm so envious. <laughs> Oh, and um, you know uh, me I'm a blood fan of Stephen West and uh, I'm also a, very much a fan of Icelandic knitting and um, I'm dreaming of knitting myself um, an Icelandic sweater and um, anyway you need to check out that podcast and uh, get inspired yourself <laughs> so I'm losing my daylight quite soon now so I need to wrap up this episode um, but I wanted to share with you that um, well November is here and uh, I I'm not very happy about November you know and uh, I think it's a very dark and boring month when nothing really happens. Here in Norway we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. So November is basically a month where we just um, we hope for the month to just zoom by so that we can reach Advent and December because then it's then the fun part is happening and uh, we get to enjoy the Christmas preparations and all that so and in November we really really start to feel the effect of losing daylight and it doesn't really get any lighter be until we get some snow out because the snow is doing a great job in lightening up uh, the environment outdoors 
so we get an impression of having more light than we actually have. All this to say that I have been wanting to make more out of November <laughs> than just having a, a month of waiting and holding on. Um, I have decided to make November a cozy month and um, you know enjoy the simple things and um, try and be happy with the situation of November because even though we have a lot of restrictions and limitations in this month we also have things to be happy about so I decided to make um, kind of a vlog about November and my pursuit to make November uh, a better month <laughs> and I'm calling my project uh, one month of Higa. I will be putting up some shorter uh, clips on YouTube for you to enjoy if you like. I know that vlogging and these things are not for everybody but there will be cozy things, there will be uh, knitting of course, there will be yarn, there will be candles and tea and um, nice, nice things that I will do every day and try and make space for every day for November to be a cozy Higgy month. So that's all. I am so happy that you are here with me and I thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you um, through my month of Hygge <laughs> uh, or at least uh, in the next episode in a couple of weeks time. So happy knitting and bye bye! <laughs>